find the domain of the given function f of x equals 2 divided by x minus 3. Now in order to find the domain of, of a function like this, we need to remember the following important rule, that in a fraction, the denominator, denominator, the denominator cannot be 0. Okay, so in this case, x minus 3 cannot be 0. So one strategy or one approach is to actually set the denominator equal to 0, x minus 3 equal to 0, and solve for x. So this would give us a value of x, in fact all values of x, that make the denominator 0. So our domain must include all the real numbers except this value of 3. So one way to write that is the domain, let's pick a blue, the domain D is the set of all real numbers, all real numbers x except 3. So it's all real numbers except 3. Another that's, that's in words. Another more common way to write something similar to this statement in set notation would be the domain of all real numbers x such that, and this vertical line just denotes the words such that, x is not equal to 3. Okay, so now one final notation that we can use is called the interval notation. And this is useful in, it's, it's sort of a shorthand notation. And the interval notation, usually it's nice to have a number line to help us visualize how the, how the, the interval notation works. So let's draw a number line here. Let's go straight over. So now, the number line on the left side is basically negative infinity, and all the way over here on the right is positive infinity, and our point of interest is at 3, so I'll put 3, and our domain is basically all the real numbers except for 3, so we want to exclude 3 from this number line, so let's draw a little hole to remind us we're not including 3. So now. Interval notation involves basically parentheses, brackets, and kind of gluing together all the pieces of the number line. So we're going to start from the smallest value that we're allowed to use, and we can go all the way as far as we want to the negative infinity realm, up to, up to 3, but not including 3, because we're not allowed to be at 3. So then I'll just include a rounded parentheses. And then we pick up where we left off. So x goes from 3 on to positive infinity and a rounded parentheses there. Now, you might wonder, well, why do I have rounded parentheses at infinity? Well, it's generally it's, it's conventional to just use rounded parentheses at negative infinity and positive infinity to indicate we never actually equal infinity since it's just some sort of abstract notion. Let's just put rounded parentheses there. So in interval notation, interval notation, our leftmost endpoint is at negative infinity, and we go up to 3 with a rounded parentheses, then we pick up from 3, and we go on to positive infinity. And the way we glue these two uh, intervals together is just with a union symbol union as in set notation. So here is our domain in interval notation. Okay, now let's consider a different function. Let's consider the function f of x equals the square root of x minus 3. So in this case we want to remember the rule that our expression under the radical cannot be negative. 
So this must be, x must be greater than or equal to 0. Now remember, it can be equal to 0 because the square root of 0 equals 0. That's okay. But we can't have the square root of a negative number be a real number. So x minus 3 must be greater than or equal to 0. And so the denominator is simply denominator. So x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Sorry, not denominator. Domain. The domain is equal to. So if we just finish solving this inequality, we'll find x is greater than or equal to 3. So the domain is the set of x's such that x is greater than or equal to 3. It's all real numbers x such that x is greater than or equal to 3. And in interval notation, we can write that in the following way. Let's get our number line. Okay. So in interval notation, let's just remind ourselves, this is also an interval notation. Interval notation. So our points, we are going to give our negative infinity on the left, our positive infinity on the right, and our point of interest here is x equals 3. So now in our interval notation, our values of x must be greater than or equal to 3. So we are allowed to equal 3, so let's put that closed circle there. And in interval notation, including the endpoint, means we draw a square bracket. And everything to the right, or greater than 3, is also allowed. And we'll include a rounded parenthesis there at infinity. So our interval notation for the domain is from 3 to plus infinity with a rounded parenthesis. Okay, now, let's go with one more example that's similar to the one we just covered, but with a little twist. So let's find the domain of the function f of x equals 1 divided by the square root of x minus 3. So now, we want to remember the same rule we had up here, that what's under the radical cannot be negative. So we want to say x minus 3 cannot be negative. So that means x minus 3 is greater than, but we do not include 0. It's not equal to 0 because the denominator cannot be 0. So we just say greater than 0 in this case. So now to find the domain in set notation, we simply say it's the set of all real numbers x such that x is greater than 3 because this expression just finishes off as x is greater than 3. Okay, now in interval notation, interval notation, we'll go back to our number line. And drawing our number line with, again, negative infinity on the left, positive infinity on the right, and our point of interest is still at 3. And in this case, we're not equaling 3 because we don't have the little bar, the little equal sign. It's just greater than 3, so we're going to have a hole at 3. So our values in the domain are all the values of x not equal to x, not equal to 3, but just a little bit above. So we're going to write a little round of parentheses and all the values of x to the right of 3, up to infinity. So in interval notation, our domain is from 3 with rounded parentheses because we're not equaling 3, up to positive infinity.